The situation in Ukraine is very much at the center of the world's attention at the moment. Overnight on Tuesday, there, were a, there was a serious attempt by the Ukrainian riot police to remove protesters in Independent Square in Kiev who are protesting against the government of President Yanukovych. But it looks as though that standoff is still continuing. They have not completely cleared the protesters from the square. The situation is serious. I'm joined here by Neil Buckley, the Financial Times' East Europe editor, who's been in Kiev recently. How do you see things at the end of the events that happened on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning? Well, the uh, attempt by riot police to clear the square hasn't succeeded. They have managed to uh, remove a lot of barricades around the square that protesters have put in place. They sent in bulldozers and chainsaws uh, to, 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 to clear those away. But police have withdrawn on Wednesday morning and uh, a, a number of protesters are still on the square, several thousand. Uh, and there have been some indications from uh, the authorities this morning that uh, the protesters will now be allowed to remain. There won't be any further attempt to remove them. So protesters are calling this a victory for the time being. And do you think they're right to call it that? Or do you think actually over the last few weeks we've seen the Yanukovych government gradually reducing the scale of the protest? Uh, it has succeeded in reducing the scale of the protest in the last few days. Um, we saw action on Monday night to remove barricades elsewhere outside government buildings. Um, so it's too early to declare a victory. Uh, it, it's no, there's no certainty that we won't see more attempts overnight uh, tonight to, to, to clear uh, the protesters away. But they have shown their resolve uh, in standing their ground, uh, defending the territory as it were, and staying put even in temperatures of minus 13 degrees last night. It is quite extraordinary and it is a very serious standoff. I mean, this is much more serious in terms of the violence, I think, than anything that happened in 2004 with the Orange Revolution. Exactly. In 2004, there was no violence like this. Uh, the then President Leonid Kuchma uh, held out against using any sort of force to, to break up the very large um, demonstrations there were at the time of the Orange Revolution. So Yanukovych has taken a step uh, beyond what uh, his predecessor was prepared to do. That makes the situation very dangerous, very potentially uh, explosive, and is exactly what uh, the EU and US had been urging him not to do. You mentioned the EU and US. Uh, this has all come about in large part because Yanukovych decided not to go down the road of a kind of trade agreement with the EU, and that's created this enormous protest by people who want closer links with the EU and to move away from Russia. What can the EU and the US do at this point? Are they merely spectators in this whole thing? Or can the EU possibly recalibrate the offer that it made to Yanukovych to try and bring him back to the table? I think the immediate priority uh, for Ukraine right now is the economy is in very bad shape, or rather the macroeconomic situation is very bad. Their uh, foreign exchange reserves are dwindling. Uh, they have big liabilities they're going to have to service in coming months, so they need money. So one thing the West can do is to offer a bailout via the IMF. There's been on-off talks for months about a bailout um, that would at least stabilise the macroeconomic situation. Of course, they need a government, uh, the IMF, uh, inter international authorities, need a government that they can work with and is prepared to engage with them. Uh, at the moment, it's not clear uh, if this government is really prepared to, to engage properly with the IMF. But that's something concrete uh, the, the EU and US could, could propose. So they um, could propose that. On the other hand, the protesters, they want to see Yanukovych out. Is that a realistic possibility? At the end of the day, if he were to leave power, he would almost certainly go down a road of criminal prosecution and so on. I mean, he's fighting for his political life and his own freedom, so it's pretty unlikely that he's going to give up, isn't it? All the indications are that he, that he definitely will not give up. Uh, it's against his personality and instincts to do so. And as you say, uh, he could find himself in a very serious situation if he, if he is forced out or stands down. So I think there needs to be some kind of compromise on both sides if we're going to get out of this situation. The opposition perhaps have to drop the demand for the president to stand down, um, but instead accept uh, a new government, perhaps a government of national unity that includes opposition figures, for, for example. Uh, Yanukovych needs to uh, resolve not to use force anymore and also needs to hold off signing any kind of deal with Russia. There are still indications that uh, he may do that, which could be a very inflammatory move in the current situation. Neil, thank you very much. It looks a, a really uncertain situation and one which I know you and the FT will be watching very closely in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you.